everybody. Welcome to the Archaeology Lab. My name is Corey Hayward. I'm one of our archaeologists here and I spend my time researching and cataloging our collection back here in the lab. Uh, so even though you all can't come to us, I thought I would bring a little bit of my research to you. And this past week I've been doing a type of artifact analysis called cross-mending. So cross-mending is essentially trying to do a 3D puzzle, multiple 3D puzzles, um, and you're not sure if you have all the pieces, and you're not sure if all these pieces go together. Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge, um, but the goal of it is essentially to get a better understanding of what these objects would have looked like as a whole, um, as opposed to the fragments that, of course, we receive in our archaeological assemblages. Um, so right now I've been working on a type of artifact, a type of pottery called Kelowna ware. Uh, this is a low-fired earthenware. It's made by enslaved Africans, their descendants, as well as Native Americans, beginning in the colonial period and lasting um, through the 19th century to the mid-1800s. One of the most important things about Kelowna ware and how it contrasts with European ceramics is that we don't know a lot about it, but it can tell us about the human behavior of marginalized communities here at Drayton Hall. So it's a really, really important artifact to study and something that I've been focusing on for the past year. So my hope in being able to put these pieces back together in these giant 3D puzzles is kind of uh, multiple. One, again, to get a better understanding of what the vessels would have looked like, um, but also to get an understanding of how the different contexts are relating to one another. So everything on these tables is from one uh, excavation, one project, the South Lanker Well. But they come from not just different units in that project, but different layers as well. So if we're seeing cross-mending between two different layers, that'll tell us uh, a good bit about the association of those strata and how we should be interpreting the contextual information, which is really, really important in archaeology. One of the benefits to doing this type of analysis is that it gives us the ability to then count how many vessels, how many objects we think would have been coming out of this assemblage, um, and that's called a minimum vessel count. So we'll essentially pick a unique attribute on these vessels, typically rims, and essentially say, well, I have X number of unique rims, and therefore I have a minimum vessel count of X. Um, we've already done some of these counts for other ceramics coming out of this assemblage and the numbers were really high, kind of close to 100 for each of those ceramic wares. So given the number of sherds um, recovered and that are laying on this table, I'm optimistic that we'll get a similarly high number, which is great because that means we'll get even more data out of, you know, kind of a vessel based analysis as opposed to a sherd based analysis here. So really basically kind of how we do this, um, and you can see I've got them laid out pretty organized on these tables, is I'll essentially sort them by common attributes. So paste color being a big one, different surface treatments. Um, so essentially they should be sitting near or next to the shirts that they're most likely to mend with. And that helps me um, go through and, and spend time and do this a little more systematically. And then if we find men's, we of course glue them together. Um, we use a type of glue that is reversible, so it's non-damaging to the artifact. And then we'll do that larger analysis and counting and essentially put all this information into our catalog with all the rest of our data. So I'm really excited for uh, finally completing this kind of last stage of this analysis. Hopefully we'll get some really great photos and we can share that as well with you all. And I'll be sure to check back in and share some other research that I've been doing as well.